of course, uh, uh, this is going to be a winter birding webinar. This is where we're going to talk about uh, how to attract birds into your backyard. And so uh, there's a lot of local native bird species, especially here in Virginia. Of course, we've got people watching all over the country. So um, I just do a little bit of research and look at what the birds are that stay in your area. Lots of birds migrate north and south depending on the types of the years. Um, so you might see a lot of birds uh, moving out of your areas, but it's still a great time to attract lots and lots of birds into your area. Um, if you haven't ever done so before, it's a fun, fun uh, thing to do and it's very, very easy to get started. It's as simple as just getting a feeder and some bird seed. It's that simple. Um, but if you're looking to attract certain birds, of course, we can help you with that as well. Um, I've got lots of bird seed. I've got lots of feeders and houses. We're going to talk about all of those different things. Uh, the typical birds that you're going to see in this area right now um, are cardinals. Woodpeckers are one of my favorites to watch eat um, out of the feeders. Uh, so we've got cardinals, woodpeckers, finches, chickadees, um, titmice, um, and uh, sparrows, and nuthatches. Um, and so there's a, a huge assortment of birds really that are still out there feeding. Blue jays are another really popular one. Um, so I can kind of talk about some of those as we go through this, but typically um, all of your birds that are, are in this area that are native, that are local, that are sticking around through the winter season, this is a great time to feed them. Um, and think about that. Um, so uh, another thing that I like to talk about is, um, is the, the act of birding or the act of feeding birds really gives you a sense of well-being. Um, it really um, it, it relieves your stress. It's nice to be able to sit at a window um, and watch the birds feed. So it's a really enjoyable experience. And I know sometimes the holidays can be stressful. Also with what everything that we've been going through in 2020 has been stressful. So uh, it's really, really nice to be able to sit um, at a window with the family um, or just by yourself and enjoy coffee in the morning and watch the birds feed. Um, and so it's just a really, really fun thing. However, it's cold outside, and so why it's important to feed the birds, there's also other issues that can come about, which is everybody's hungry. So if you've got possums, raccoons, squirrels, they're all hungry as well. So hopefully I can give you some tips and tricks uh, to help avoid those issues uh, as you begin to do some birding. If you're a beginner or if you're experienced, hopefully you'll learn something here. Um, so some of the topics that I'm going to talk about is why we feed the birds, um, and then the types of feeders and the types of houses that you can select. Uh, to attract birds. Um, and then I'll finish off with a bunch of tips and tricks that I've learned over the years um, that uh, I think are really, really helpful to make you success successful in birding, um, but also just make it more enjoyable and efficient and easy for you. Um, so why do we feed birds um, in our area? So of course, I always tell people uh, the winter months, uh, definitely you know, leading from fall into winter, um, and then spring into summer, those are some of the most important times right now because they're having a hard time finding a source of food. And warmth comes from protein and, and, and fat. And so that's what the birds need right now is they, they want to fatten up. And sometimes it's hard to find a food source, especially if you live in northern climates um, where the ground might freeze and they can't get to insects and worms and stuff like that. Um, and you need to give them some sort of substance to get through the winter months. Um, however, I will always tell people, and this is kind of my belief, is that, is that I think feeding the birds throughout the entire year is the most beneficial thing you can do. Um, and not to stop, uh, just keep on feeding them because really bird food, bird seed, all the different types of things that you can feed birds um, is not their main source of food. It's, it's more of a snack. Um, it does help them in times of need, um, which we typically will experience in the winter, which is why we're doing this now is, is it's very important to kind of make sure that our feathered friends have enough uh, fat and protein to get through the, the winter months, especially if they're struggling to find some food. Um, but um, feeding them year round really is helpful. I know a lot of people, I've always heard people say, you don't need to feed them in the summer months uh, because that's when they're out feeding on insects and things. And so for us gardeners, um, of course, you know, if you get any kind of infestation of bugs um, in your uh, trees or shrubs or plants around your home, then you want birds in the area to feed on those. How, however, um, they might not be as attracted to your yard unless you're providing them with a snack. And so that's why I typically recommend feeding them year round keeps them in your area. It allows them to nest if they become very um, uh, uh, used to your area. They, they, they really enjoy your backyard and they'll make their home there and then they'll stay for years and years. And so uh, it's a really good idea to continue to feed them um, throughout the entire year. It's an enjoyable experience throughout the entire year, uh, but don't worry about saying, I, I shouldn't feed them in a certain time frame. I really think you should feed them year round. It also helps 
um, with uh, their, their young uh, when um, they hatch or when they have their young in the spring season. So uh, a lot of birds, most birds are going to nest in the spring through the, or really in the winter into spring, um, have their mate and then they're going to have their young. And so it really does help the birds um, keep up their energy. Uh, obviously, being a bird, you have to use a lot of energy to move those wings and get them moving at a, at a fast rate of speed so that they can fly. So they burn a lot of energy. Um, and so giving them a source of energy is really, really important all through the year, but really in the winter and the spring for sure. Um, but I really recommend doing it year round because it does help out their young. It helps them out while they're in the winter months and it keeps them in your yard, which for us gardeners, like I said, is really important to help maintain some of those insect uh, uh, issues that we might have in our plants. Um, so it's a really, really important thing. Um, and so let me talk about a couple different types of bird seed while we're on this subject. Um, of course, I carry lots and lots of different types of bird seed here at McDonald Garden Center. You can find them anywhere. So again, if you're looking, uh, I definitely recommend supporting your local garden centers. Um, but if you're in our neck of the woods, then definitely come and check us out. We have a great selection of, of, of bird seed. I really um, kind of try to, to stay away from what I like to call commodity seed, um, which is really an inexpensive uh, type of seed. Usually that's gonna have a lot of filler in it. It's gonna have a lot of milo, which is a seed that most birds don't really like that much, and they're gonna throw it out. Um, and so if you ever see that you feed a, or that you fill one of your bird feeders uh, with a inexpensive seed, and it goes very quick, so it's just emptied within a day or two, that's typically because most birds are coming to your feeder, but they're picking out what they want and they're throwing the rest of it on the ground, which one can make a mess over time um, and, and be something that you don't necessarily wanna have to clean up. Um, but also, it's not, really, it's not really helpful to you because it's inefficient. It's a really a waste of money, it's a waste of time. You're going out and having to fill your feeder every single day. But if you get a high quality seed, then you actually shouldn't have to fill it as much. The birds are gonna love it a lot more. You're gonna attract more birds. Um, and it's gonna be higher in protein and higher in fat and higher in energy and the different types of things that the, the, the birds actually want. And so I always recommend getting a high quality bird seed um, because it's gonna be the best way to not have to fill your feeders as much um, and also attract the most amount of birds. So I carry really two main types or two brands uh, of bird seed here. And again, this doesn't have to be the, the, the only two types of uh, brands that you buy, uh, but I really do believe in Wild Delight. Wild Delight is one of them, so you're gonna see this package here. And there's lots and lots of different types in each of these, but Wild Delight is one company that we carry, one brand that we carry, and then Kohl's is another. And Kohl's is a really, really nice high-end uh, bird seed as well. What these are, th these companies specialize in these bird seeds. That's basically all they do. They don't really do a lot of other things. Some of them might make a couple feeders, a couple different things, but this is really what they do. And so if you're out there looking at some, uh, some off-brand names or some different brands out there, they might do a lot of different things. Um, they might be a fertilizer company that also does bird seed. So kind of a weird mix. Now, they're probably not doing them at the same plant, so you don't have to worry about that. But these companies specifically design uh, bird seeds and foods, and so that's what's so good about them. Uh, lots and lots of different types. Um, I couldn't bring them all in here, but let's talk about a couple of them. So this is Wild Delight's Songbird Food. This is a really, really nice blend, um, and I'll read you some of the ingredients off of them so you know what's in them. Uh, this one's really popular for uh, really just getting the biggest wide range of birds. That's why I like this one. It's really designed for cardinals, uh, chickadees, uh, nuthatches, uh, finches, really anything. And so this one's got sunflower seed, safflower seed, kernels, peanuts, raisins. So it's got a little bit of fruit in it as well. And so there's, not, there's, hard, there's no filler in this. It's all pure seed. Um, and it's a, just a, a really, really great mix to kind of start off with. If you're a beginner, I love the songbird food. It fits into pretty much any feeder, whether it's a hopper style. We'll get into all the feeders here in a minute. But that's a really, really nice one. So if you're looking for something, especially in the winter months, sunflower seed is really, really helpful. Uh, it's got a lot of fat and a lot of protein in that seed. Um, it also is more enjoyable, I think, to watch because uh, they're in the kernel. So you gotta go in there and you gotta get the nut out, which is, is fun to watch the birds do. And we can talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Um, another one from Wild Delight that I absolutely love, well, there's two more that I grabbed, is the Bugs and Berries. So Bugs and Berries is a really, really nice one. So this one's got sunflower kernels, safflower seed, dried black, um, dry black soldier fly larvae 
which is kind of cool, dried cranberries, and dried mealworms. So this one's got some bugs in it. And bugs are really, really a great source of protein and fat as well. Um, and it attracts some certain, some, some different birds. So especially in the springtime, that's why right on the package is a bluebird. They love their worms. They, they love those mealworms. But this is also great for uh, the, the, the tit mice and the um, chickadees. And chickadees love this mix. So, And I love watching the chickadees. They're a lot of fun to, to really watch uh, feed off your bird feeder. But you'll get cardinals, you'll get finches, you'll get lots of different birds with this. Um, and it's a really, really great mix as well. And then another one of my favorites is the fruit and berry. So Wild Delights Fruit and Berry. It's a really, really nice mix. It's got a lot of fruit in it. So let me read the ingredients on this one. It's sunflower seeds, safflower seed, peanuts, kernels, dried apples, cherries, dried cranberries, and juniper berries, and dried raisins. So it's got a lot of vitamins uh, from those berries, which is great for energy, great source of food. It's a really, really nice snack. I really like this one because it seems to last a long time. Uh, it fills them up pretty quick, gives them energy to go out and forage for their own food. Um, but also, the woodpeckers really, really seem to love this one. Uh, they love the peanuts, but they like some of that fruit as well. So this is a really, really nice mix that I really, really enjoy. Fruit and berry or nut and berry, either one. Uh, really, they're very similar, uh, but they're great mixes made by Wild Delight. Also, the last thing I grabbed from Wild Delight was the uh, bugs for birds. So this is just a mix of bugs. Mainly mealworms, but it's uh, got the soldier fly larvae, the dried mealworms, and the darkling beetles. So the dried darkling beetles. So these are all dried bugs. It's kind of weird looking, <laughs> but I really like this mix. It's great, again, for those chickadees, bluebirds. Of course, bluebirds aren't going to be around as much right now, um, but it's a really, really nice mix. It's really high in protein. So all of these seeds are going to tell you your protein, your fat, and your fiber, um, as well as maybe some other ingredients. But this one is... 32% protein, so it's a lot of insects and it's gonna be high in protein, which is really, really nice, but also high in fat, 26% fat. So I really, really like uh, using some of the, the straight bug mixes as well. Maybe I'll throw it out there in a little dish for a snack, maybe a platform feeder. We'll talk about those in a minute, all the feeders. Kohl's also makes some amazing mixes. Kohl's is really, really nice. Um, this is gonna last a long time in your feeders because it's a, a high in protein and, and fat and fiber, and so it's really, really a, a great mix. This is one of my favorite ones from Kohl's. It's the Special Feeder, so it's called Special Feeder. It's got black oil, sunflower, sunflower meats, black striped sunflower, uh, raw peanuts, safflower, and pecans. So pecans is kind of something that you don't typically see in a lot of mixes, but this is a really, really nice mix. Um, almost uh, uh, so the, the ability for you to eat it. I wouldn't eat bird seed, but it's got some good stuff in there. So this is a really, really nice mix. Um, special feeder by Kohl's, one of my favorites. Um, then of course, we've got the hot meats. So this is really nice. Um, this is uh, infused with uh, the capsaicin, which is hot pepper. So this one, the ingredients are sunflower meats, liquid habanero chili, pepper, and then safflower oil. So it's a really, really nice mix. And you can see it's just full of all of those uh, sunflower meats. So it's a really, really nice mix. Um, or it's a really, really nice straight blend of one type of thing. And then, of course, they mix the habanero in there so that it will keep the squirrels away. Squirrels will taste the hot pepper, but uh, birds don't. So it's a really, really good uh, seed. And Wild Delight makes one too. Um, so whatever you're using, and we even have the sauce. So I didn't grab that, but you can mix that in with your own bird seed. So maybe you've got a bird seed of your choice that you love, but the squirrels love to get into it. You can mix some uh, of that habanero sauce in there as well uh, and keep the squirrels away. Um, so then the last one that I would show you from Kohl's is this uh, blue ribbon blend. So the blue ribbon blend is a really, really nice mix. This one is black oil sunflower, sunflower meats. Um, this has millet and cracked corn in it as well. So this is a really, really nice mix. Um, it's, it's a really great uh, one for beginners. Again, it's gonna attract a wide variety of birds. It's a really, really nice one. So Kohl's makes a really, really nice bird seed. And so does Wild Light, and that's why we carry those. Let me get my bags out of the way here so I can show you some feeders. So really what I tell people is when you're starting with a bird seed, get a basic one. If you're a beginner, beginner birder, then um, uh, get some basic bird seed. That's why I love this songbird food. It's a really, really good one. There's cardinal food that Wild Delight makes as well. The special feeder by Kohl's uh, is a really nice mix as well. So uh, those really help, I think, attract the most wide uh, range of birds. 
Um, so lots and lots of different types of seeds out, seed out there. I recommend feeding them year round. I think it's really important. All right, let's talk about some feeders here. Um, so in the winter, because that's what we're kind of specifically talking about here, in the winter, um, most of your feeders out there should have a roof on it. So if you use like a platform feeder or even a tube feeder, something like this, some tube feeders have a roof on it, but these don't. And so what happens a lot of times is we get snow, which we don't get as much snow in this area as we probably would like, uh, but we do get a lot of, of, of uh, rain and wind at the same time, which usually will blow water into your seed and it doesn't have the chance to dry out very quickly because we don't have a lot of heat. And so using something like this in the winter months, make sure that you're not filling it maybe all the way full um, or you're changing it frequently. So that's kind of some tips there. Um, if you only have one type of feeder and it happens to be a tube feeder that doesn't have a very large roof over the top. However, there are some tube feeders. If you love tube feeders, which I'm, I'm kind of, uh, that's kind of one of my favorites is using a tube feeder because it's very easy. It's fun to watch. I think it gets a lot of action. Um, then you can get ones that have roofs on it. So this one has a roof. It's got a little platform as well that allows the seed to kind of fill in there if they drop it. It's also got some holes in it. So if moisture does get into this, it can drain out. Um, but if you're using a feeder in the winter time, I definitely recommend making sure that it has some sort of covering over the top because if your seed gets wet, if your uh, bird food gets wet, it's not gonna dry out as quickly as it will in the spring, summer, into fall months. Um, so in the winter, we wanna make sure that that's a little bit more protected. Um, so also there's lots and lots of different types of feeders. One of my favorite styles is a hopper feeder. So a hopper feeder is gonna be kind of this style which is basically going to be a, a hopper, a basically a source of food for it to come down to a certain point. Um, and then it's gonna come out of a slight opening down here in the bottom and allow them to come and land on the perch on the platform and eat out of the food. So if you're a platform feeder and you believe in platform feeders, you might try a hopper feeder in the winter months because it's got the covering, it's got the roof. This one's really nice, it's made out of cedar, it's very easy to fill, you just open that up, you can fill it real quick, it's easy to clean too because you can take these windows out. Um, and we'll talk about cleaning here in a little bit when I get to my tips and tricks portion. Um, but hopper feeders are a really, really nice option. Um, and there's a lot of different styles of hopper feeders. If you want, that's a cedar, so that's actually gonna get like kind of a gray patina on it. This is a metal hopper feeder. So this one is the same design, same idea. It's kind of in a silo effect. It's got a, it's got a you know, narrow bottom. It's got a higher point at the top. Easy again to fill. Um, and it's got these great perches here, but it's gonna protect your seed through those uh, wet time frames. It also gives you a window on the side so you can see what level you're at with your bird food. Um, and there's a couple other types of hopper styles that are also squirrel resistant. So this is one of my favorites here, is this little mini absolute squirrel proof. So what this does is when a bird, or when a squirrel, anything that's too heavy, most birds will land on this. Sometimes blue jays don't typically love this type. So if you're looking for uh, blue jays, uh, you might look at more of a hopper feeder that doesn't have the squirrel resistance because blue jays, they're not super heavy birds, but they're heavier. Um, and sometimes they will uh, trigger this to happen. And so, but that's what's designed for the squirrels or raccoons or possums or any other wildlife that you might have out there. If they go to get the seed, they got to touch this perch and this perch will close down that door and allow them not to get into it. Be aware though, sometimes uh, uh, other animals and they're persistent, especially uh, squirrels. And that's kind of my biggest problem with squirrels is, is they're persistent, they just keep on trying. Um, and so they'll keep on messing with it, it keeps the birds away unfortunately. Eventually they will give up, um, but, uh, but, but that is a problem is that they can sit there and figure it out. So if you have this hanging from a tree that maybe they have the ability of getting to it another way, then you might try looking at hanging it in a different place. Um, and I've got a couple tips and tricks that I'll share with you here in a little bit on how you can do that as well. But that's another type of hopper feeder that has a squirrel resistant feature in it. And then we've got that same kind of style hopper feeder whoop, that um, is just a little bit of a different look. So there's lots and lots of different looks of these triggered here. You can also set these to uh, be at different weight ratios. So if you're finding that the squirrels are figuring it out, then you might make it for lighter uh, birds and that way it won't trigger as easily. Tube feeders are very, very popular. They're very easy to use and there's lots and lots of different styles of them. Uh, this is one that is uh, considered a mesh feeder. Now this is great for mealworms and sunflower, uh, bigger chunks of seed. You wouldn't want to put a fine seed in this. It's going to fall out. But birds that cling to this um, are going to love it because 
They feel like they're the only ones that can get to it, doesn't have purchase, so it's not going to uh, allow a lot of those, those bigger birds like the Blue Jays and the Cardinals and the um, uh, different types of larger birds that might come to this. This is going to be more for the chickadees and the wrens and the finches. They love coming to these and even bluebirds if you put mealworms in them um, in the summer months. So just a mesh tube feeder is a really, really good feeder. But then there's lots and lots of other types. I mean, I just grabbed a couple. I just grabbed an assortment here. This one's nice because it's got four perches. So you can get some that have two on this side and two on this side, which is also nice because if your seed gets low, you can still, it can still come out of this, this bottom uh, uh, port here. And so that's a really, really nice simple feeder. Uh, I showed you this little silver one earlier. That's a nice one. It's got two perches at the bottom, just nice and simple and easy. Uh, depends on how much action you're getting as to what feeder you might try. If I were going to start, I would probably start with just a basic tube feeder and see what I am attracting. Maybe a hopper feeder just so you have those styles around. Um, you might start to get into some bigger ones if you've got a lot of action, if you've got a lot of birds coming around. This one is kind of cool because it's got a little bit of a squirrel proofness to it, which is this cage that's built around. So the cage doesn't allow the squirrel to get in there as much. It's also got uh, a covering on the port so that they can't quite get in there. They might be able to reach their hands in there, but they're not going to be able to get enough. This cage is going to kind of protect it. Uh, but all your smaller birds are going to be able to get on this. It's kind of a, a, a mix between a mesh feeder and just a straight tube feeder. And so it's going to help with the squirrels, but it's also going to allow all those clinging birds, which are a lot of fun to watch. Uh, they're really, really going to enjoy something like that. This is another one that's got a big tray at the bottom, which is nice because you can, um, you, this will collect a lot of seed. So some of those uh, larger birds like cardinals and stuff like that can land on this platform down here at the bottom. They can feed out of the tray. And then of course the smaller birds can cling on. So you can get attract a lot of birds with this type of tube feeder. It's also got different ports. So sometimes when you're looking at your bird feeders, uh, check it out and see if it tells you any more information. This one's a dual, a dual port. So this one is set up for um, larger foods, but you can also put another port in there, which allows for smaller seed like Niger seed and stuff like that, uh, or safflower. So this is a really, really nice one. And then, of course, I love my squirrel proof feeders. I've got a lot of squirrels. I got a lot of trees in my backyard. So I get a lot of squirrel action. I get some raccoon action as well. But there's a lot of squirrel proof uh, feeders out there. I think we all probably know of, if, if you've ever done birding before, you know of the droll Yankees. I do carry some droll Yankee, um, the, the uh, Yankee tipper and the flipper and the whipper and all those. Uh, we carry those throughout the season as well. But this one's kind of a nice little, you know, not super, super expensive, but this has the same idea as this perch is weight. Uh, weighted, so too much weight gets on here, it closes down, and the squirrels have nothing to cling on to because it's just a tube. So it's hard for the squirrels to even get on this. If they do get down to this perch, it collapses, and then that way they fall off and they can't get to the, the, the seed anymore. So that's a really, really nice one. But then my favorite feeder of all is the squirrel buster. And so I've been talking about this one for a few years. Um, it, it's one of my favorites. We've really gone uh, heavier into carrying this one, try to carry it year round. Um, I know sometimes like right now, it's hard to kind of get our hands on some of them. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, if you start to go out and search for birding products, I can tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but this one is one of my favorites. I opened this up so I could show it to you. And Squirrel Buster makes a couple different ones. We've got the Legacy and the Mini as well. This is your standard uh, or your classic Squirrel Buster. It's one of my favorites. If you're going to spend some money and get a nice feeder, this is the one that I recommend. It's going to last you a long time. So same kind of concept. Has the cage on the outside, tube is on the inside. It's got multiple perches, so it's a really, really good tube feeder. It does have a covering on it, and the tube is much smaller than it looks. So if this, this cage sits pretty close to the edge of this roof, but the tube is further in. It's about an inch on the inside on every angle, on every side. So it's going to protect it from the weather so you don't have to worry about your seed getting wet. Um, it's got these really nice metal perches as well. So these are really, really easy to use um, for the birds. Um, and then it's got the weight effect as well. So when the squirrel gets on it, you can see that it pulls down. So the, the whole tube moves up. And then if you look at the mesh here, you can kind of see on, your, on, on the video there, um, that there's a lot, a lot tighter mesh right here. So there's an opening here in the port so I can put my finger in there, but then when it goes down, I can't get my finger into the port. And the squirrels are stumped. It is the best feeder. It's all made out of metal. It's really easy to clean too. You can take it apart. You can take the whole thing apart. There's a, a little nut here on the bottom that you unscrew, and then you take the top off. It's very easy to fill as well, which I love. Is anything that's nice and easy to fill. 
So you just pop that off and then you fill it right down through the tube and then you just pop it back on. Super, super easy to clean. Uh, really, really nice, high quality feeder. I've carried a lot of these in the past um, that might be plastic. I've had my squirrels eat the plastic perches off. I guess they said, if I can't have it, nobody can have it. Uh, but this one's all metal. I've had mine for almost a year now and I absolutely love it. It is the best feeder out there, I think. Um, very, you know, it's not quite as expensive as the Droll Yankee, as the Yankee Tipper or Whipper or Flipper. Um, but it's kind of, I think ours are priced at $69.99. $69.99, that's a good price for a high quality feeder. It's gonna last you years and years and years. Plus it's also got a large capacity to it, which I also like. I don't have to fill it up all the way if I don't want to. Depends on how much action I'm getting, but typically I'll fill it up. I know that the seed's protected in there. Um, it can hold, I don't know if it tells me exactly how many pounds it'll hold, but I think it's five pounds. Um, oh, sorry, 2.4 pounds. There's a bigger one that holds five, uh, which I don't carry, but this one carries 2.4, holds 2.4 pounds. So I can get a nice five, six pound bag of bird seed and fill this up three times and it really, really is gonna last a long time. It's very, very high quality. So that's kind of my go-to feeder. Uh, there's lots and lots of different styles out there, of course. Uh, just look at what might be the best for you. If you're a beginner, you might start with a tube feeder. It's super, super simple and easy. If you find you have squirrel issues or you're pretty sure you're going to have squirrel issues, look for a squirrel resistant feeder. Um, it'll save you a lot of hassle. Um, or go with something like the Hot Meats that's got that habanero protection uh, from that hot pepper uh, um, uh, sauce that really helps. Doesn't hurt the birds, the birds don't taste it, only uh, the squirrels will and other types of mammals. Um, so that's really kind of the information on the feeders. Like I said, there's lots and lots of different types out there. Um, we, we, uh, we do carry platform feeders, we do carry suet as well. Um, so let me talk about that here for a second, because if you're going out looking for birding products right now, uh, you might not find a lot. We always have bird seed, we always have feeders, we always have houses. We have a pretty good selection right now. But as all garden centers do, especially local garden centers, um, all of their spring products are gonna start arriving here pretty soon. So right after Christmas, you'll even see it here. Uh, we might even do another birding webinar or uh, we'll do some birding promotions. You find some good deals early in the season, January and February timeframe, because all of that's gonna start to, to, to uh, really come in right now. So while we have some of our basics in right now, if you're looking for something specific, it might not come in until January and February. So check, the, check out your local garden centers in January and February. It's a great time to look for new birding products uh, that have come in for the year. Uh, so there's lots and lots of choices out there. Uh, right now, if you need something, of course, we've got the needs, we've got the basics, but if you're looking for something new or you're unusual, best time to look for those is in January and February as all that new stuff starts to roll in. So it's a really, really good time. I mentioned that because suet, I just sold out of suet, so I don't have any more suet cakes. I've got the suet feeder. That's a good one in the winter, um, but you can use them year round. I don't really talk about suet too, too much, uh, but it's a very high fat, high protein uh, type of food. Um, it's it's uh, one that I, I unfortunately find that raccoons and squirrels will get into, um, but a lot of birds do love them. And if you love feeding with suet, we do carry suet products throughout the year. We just temporarily are out right now. So if you came in right now, we wouldn't have it. But like I said, if you're looking uh, to feed throughout the January, February timeframe, always check back, check back to your local garden centers. Uh, they typically will be getting more of that in. All right, so let's talk about um, the types of houses. So types of houses, there's lots and lots of different types of houses out there. When do you put a house out, I think is usually the common question that I get. And I always say the winter. So that's why, you know, right now through the month of February is a great time to put out uh, houses. One, they can see them as they're out feeding. Um, they might actually check them out and kind of inspect them a little bit, uh, but they're gonna start nesting in the spring, uh, late winter, early spring, and they're gonna start nesting to create a home for their new young. Um, and so it's a great time to have your, uh, your, your houses out. So let's talk about a couple different types out there. There's lots and lots of choices. I always start with a basic. So if you're a first timer, this is a little, um, uh, what do they call it, roosting pocket. So this is a little roosting pocket, real simple little house, easy to hang, um, and lots and lots of small birds love to get into this. Uh, chickadees and wrens and, and even your finches sometimes uh, will get into these and build a little nest. It's nice and cozy, very, very easy uh, to hang, very inexpensive. So it's your first time and you wanna try a little house, this is a great little option couple different styles out there. There's lots and different styles of these. 
but I always found really, really good success. I used to hang in my old house, I would hang like five or six of these underneath a big evergreen uh, shrub that I had limbed up into a small tree, a ligustrum. Um, and so hanging a bunch of these, I think it looked cool. It's kind of why I did it. It ended up attracting a lot of birds and they built nests in them. Um, and we'll talk about where to hang all this stuff when I get to the end with uh, how to kind of attract all the birds and all my tips and tricks. Uh, but roosting pockets are really inexpensive, a great way to go. Um, also, any kind of small hanging house is a great option. This is a wren house. Now, all of your houses are, have different size holes on the front. Um, typically, they're gonna be designed for those wrens and those chickadees and those finches and those smaller birds. As we get into some of the bigger birds, you might see a bigger opening, which might be designed for bluebirds or different types of birds, woodpecker houses, that kind of thing. Um, but most of them are gonna be for small birds, for nesting birds, for songbirds that you're gonna be attracting your, into your area. So that's a really, really nice one. This one's a wren house. It's got a hook on the top. You can hang it. It's made out of eastern red cedar, so it's going to patina very nicely. Most, all of your houses, I should say all, should have a clean out area, a, w a way to get in there and clean them out. So if you feel like, okay, it doesn't look like any birds have been going back in there. It's at the end of the summer, going into the fall season. It's a good time to go in and clean them out and freshen them up and, and just wipe them down nice and clean with some soap and water. And then that way they're nice and cleaned up and ready to use again. Uh, and then just go and hang them back up. So there's another good little tip. Um, but that's a wren house. There's a couple other styles. This is a nice one that you can put on a post. Again, another wren house. It's got the front opening so you can open it up. Uh, but it's just kind of a little bit more of a decorative one. It's got the metal roof, which I really like, uh, which protects them uh, during the winter months. Uh, keeps the moisture out, but this one you can attach to a post or a fence, real easy to use. I thought this was kind of a cool one. This is a recycled plastic material, so this is all recycled, which is really nice for the environment, um, but it's going to last a long time. So it's got a really, really nice kind of wood fur roof, uh, easy to clean out, but it's just kind of a simple hanging house, really nice kind of look. And like I said, there's tons and tons of different types out there. These are just some of my favorites that I went around and grabbed. This is another one of my favorites. So this is kind of designed uh, off the colonial times. Uh, you see a lot of these. If you have ever visited Colonial Williamsburg, you might see these. These are basically bottles that they've turned into a birdhouse. This one's great because you can hang it if you want to, but you could, I love to mount these on a you know, shed or something or a fence. These are great. It has an opening here on the side. The birds feel very protected in there. It's got a nice deep well for them to go into. And then on the back, it's just got an opening where you can get in and clean it out. And all you have to do is just go find a little branch, put it in there for a perch if you want to. It's really kind of a cool, simple style. What's also nice is if you're looking for a project for the kids, uh, you can paint this if you want to. You can paint it or your kids can paint it, give it as a Mother's Day present or give it as a Christmas gift. So this is a really, really great uh, bird bottle is what they're called. And we've got a couple different styles of those. Um, and then of course, as I was talking about the Bluebird house, so you can see slightly bigger hole. So if we're looking at these hole sizes, you can see slightly different hole size. So it's a little bit of a bigger hole designed for bluebirds, uh, but a nice, again, cedar house. Really, really simple. You could paint this if you wanted to, if you were trying to match a decor, or you can just let it naturally patina. It's a really, really nice, simple birdhouse. You can just pull out, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but you just pull out this nail and then you can open up the door and get in and clean it out if you need to. Lots and lots of different types of houses. And then of course, the decorative. There's tons and tons of decorative styles of houses. I absolutely love these because I think the story is really cool. Um, this is a birdhouse that is made um, in the USA. So it's made by a family uh, owned company in Illinois. And basically there was a bunch of farmlands out there and old uh, sheds and homes and barns that basically had been dilapidated, had fallen apart, but they went and took all the wood and all the metal and started making birdhouses. So these are really unique birdhouses. You can see the detail on that. All these little metal fixtures on it. It's got a great little clean out area. You just pop this off. You can clean it out very easily. Uh, and just really, really nice, really, really well made. I would, use my, I would use these in the home to kind of decorate with, but also great outside and really, really cool looking. So I'll show you a couple more of those. Here's another one that I grabbed. Just kind of a different look with the red door, but it's got the hole up here for them to go in and nest. And then it's got the clean out on the back. It comes with the story card, tells you all about the family, but I just love the detail on it. I just think they're really, really fun. Kind of that, that kind of folk uh, lore look, that kind of farm look, uh, that rustic look, really, really nice. This is a nice big one. So this one's a little bit bigger. It's got a nice opening here 
um, and then it's got your clean out in the back. Just a really, really nice look. I just think unique and it's a good story to tell. I think it's a great little product, a great little house that you can pick up if you want to. We have a great selection of those. Uh, so lots and lots of different houses, but definitely start thinking about putting them out now. Um, uh, as we get into these winter months, they're looking for a place to hide. Uh, they're looking for a place to, to investigate, to uh, maybe nest in in the spring. So lots and lots of options in houses, lots of options in, in feeders and seed. Keep it basic. So again, if you're a beginner, just get a small little house, you know, whether it's a, a roosting pocket or whether it's just a little simple rent house um, or even just a small little house like this. Just something that you think that the birds might uh, investigate. It does help them stay in your backyard. If you create a home for them, they're gonna stay there and they're gonna enjoy it. Um, and then if you're looking again as a beginner to start with a feeder, get a simple tube feeder. If you're pretty sure you're gonna have squirrel issues, which most of us do, then uh, look for a squirrel proof feeder because it'll kind of take that, uh, that, that feeling of like, oh, I'm so frustrated with these, bird, uh, with these squirrels, uh, kind of takes that away and makes it really, really easy. And then of course, just get like a basic food to start with. Songbird fruit is one of my favorites. Uh, the special feeder by Kohl's is a really, really nice one as well. So that's really kind of the basics. Now let me give you some tips and tricks. Now let's talk about water, of course. Water is very, very important to birds, especially in the winter months. Um, now the good news is here in Hampton Roads, we don't have a lot of freezing temperatures. So we don't typically have frozen water. Um, if we do in our bird baths, it's pretty easy to knock it out. The nice thing about a bird bath in the winter is it's convex or concave. I can't quite remember the, the difference on those, but basically it's a bowl shape. So it's not a container. So anything that's a container that freezes like a, a pot or something like that, hard to get that water out. But something that's in a bowl shape is gonna allow you to get the water out if it does freeze. Some, a little trick that I learned that I think really does help is float a couple pieces of wood in there, just a couple blocks of wood, um, and that kind of, it'll move around in the wind and it kind of prevents it from freezing as quickly or it won't freeze all the way and then you can get that frozen water out if you want to. But changing your water frequently is important. Um, so you can use a heater. I don't sell the bird bath heaters um, because it just doesn't freeze that much in our area. So we really don't have to worry about it too much. If you live up north, having a source of water and where it freezes a lot, you might look into one of those bird bath feeders. You can get them online, you can get them um, at your local bird store or garden center. They should carry them. Uh, here in our neck of the woods in Hampton Roads, I typically don't carry heaters just because um, we don't freeze that much and it's not a super, super important necessity that we have it. Uh, but having a bird bath around is great. There's a lot of solutions to, uh, if you don't have a bird bath and you're looking for something really quick, if you've got a clay saucer, is a great option. You can put water in that. It's very easy to clean out. You can put it on the ground. You can put it up on the upside down pot. So you can turn a pot upside down, put the clay saucer on top and you've got yourself a little bird bath. Uh, I talk about that a lot when I talk about, you know, inviting bees and butterflies, they also need water. Uh, so uh, having a source of water is really, really important for the birds and cleaning it out. And so that's what I'll talk about next is cleaning. Um, Cleaning is one of those parts that, that you definitely should do more frequently than I think uh, we, all, we all probably do. Whether you're using a hummingbird feeder or a just a normal tube feeder or a hopper feeder, it's important. I try and do it every time I put the, a new seed in there. I try and clean it out. Uh, it just gets me in the habit of doing it. Sometimes I might skip one or, or two uh, fills here and there, but it's really important to go and clean those out because bugs and mildew and uh, different things can build up in there and it's not healthy for the birds. So if we're feeding the birds, let's also do our part and clean their feeders and houses and bird baths for them. It really, really does help go a long way. Um, so what else? Uh, uh, so let's talk about location. Location is, is probably the most important thing. I majored in business. Uh, so of course that's like our, the number one thing in business is location, location, location. Same thing in bird feeding and bird houses. Uh, to attract birds, you need to find the right location. And typically that's gonna be a little bit more of a protected location. So you're gonna wanna get it in a tree or on a fence or in an area where they feel protected that they don't have predators looking at them. So that's really, really important to kind of try different locations. And that's my next tip is, is move things. Um, so if you put a feeder out and you're just not getting the activity that you thought you would get, then definitely try a different location. Try it, give it about a week. If nothing comes to it, then it's time to move it and change it again. Check your seed. 
Uh, you know, if you didn't get a high quality seed, you might want to try a nice blend of, of a nice good type of bird seed because that might attract more birds and bring more activity. Uh, but if you get a good bird seed and you've got a good feeder and you think you're in the right spot um, and it just isn't happening, try moving it to a different location. Uh, hanging from a small tree is one of my favorite things. If you don't have that option, of course you can use a shepherd's hook. You can attach a lot of feeders to different things like poles. Uh, so whether it's a, it's a pole feeder or a um, uh, shepherd's hook, there's lots and lots of different options there. You can even just take bird seed and scatter it in your backyard. So that's a good option. Now, of course, the squirrels and different uh, animals might get to it, but if you're just looking to attract some birds or at least get it started, that's a good option. Throw some bird seed out there. They can see it. They'll smell it. They'll come up to it and they'll, they'll start to pick away at it. Um, uh, and then they might see your feeders. Same thing with, house, with, with uh, houses. If you're putting up a birdhouse, uh, try it. You know, give it some time. If it doesn't happen, then try a new location. It's the best thing that you can do. But they do want to be protected. They want to feel like they can't be seen too much. So again, under small trees, in areas where they've got some bushes around, that's where they're going to feel most protected. Uh, gives them a place to escape. If it's just sitting out in the wide open, if you've got a big wide open area and it's just sitting right out there in the middle, they might not come to it uh, because they don't feel quite protected. They feel very exposed. Um, and so it's good to keep trying different locations until you find the right solution. Um, but typically find protected areas and then keep trying new locations. Um, if you live uh, near a area that has uh, running water, like a small creek or um, a, a drainage ditch or some sort of area that's got a water source, you might find more birds in that area. Also, if you live in a wooded area or nearby a wooded area, you're going to find a little bit more wood. Uh, you're going to find a little bit more bird activity. Um, and uh, that, that's going to encourage a lot more to come into your yard. However, if you don't, don't give up, keep trying, they'll find you. Give them a place to stay, like a home, give them a good high quality seed and a nice bird feeder and you'll be set and ready to go. Um, let's see, be patient is another kind of thing that I tell people. Be patient, it might not happen right away. If it doesn't, just be patient, take your time. It's gonna happen, you're gonna get birds in your yard. I've rarely had anybody be unsuccessful with attracting some birds in their yard. Now, if you're going after specific things and you wanna talk about that, you can come in and ask questions and we can try and uh, figure out what the solution is or why you're not attracting certain birds that you're going after. Um, let's see, what else? So a couple other things that I'll throw out there is uh, uh, owls and bats, kind of a different thing we don't talk about a lot. Uh, now they're not, bats are not birds obviously, but bats are great for the environment and hanging up a bat house is a great thing. Now they're all tucked away pretty much in the winter. You don't typically see bats out actively eating too much in the winter. Um, I don't know if they necessarily hibernate. I can't remember if that's true or not, but I know that they don't come out as much. Um, but doing a bat house in the spring or summer is a great thing to bring some of those bats in your yard. And you might be saying, why would I want bats? Well, bats eat a ton of insects, especially mosquitoes. So they're a really, really great one. Owls are great if you live in a wooded area because you might have a lot of mites or larger insect issues like the water bugs that we all hate in this area. Um, and so attracting some owls with an owl house is a great option. So there's a couple different little tips there. Um, and then uh, let's see, what else? Okay, so windows. Windows is another big one. Uh, I have a uh, sunroom that's got multiple windows all the way around. And if you want, if you're attracting birds into your yard with feeders and houses and bird baths and all of the things that you're doing, uh, and you've got a lot of windows, you might consider hanging something in your windows, whether you do a sticker decal or whether you just do a little sun catcher, something to make sure that the birds understand that those are windows um, and not an area that they can fly through. And so if you've ever had a bird hit your window and fall to the, the, to the porch or to the ground, you feel awful. And so I have always taken uh, and just hung little sun catchers or other little things, you know, use decorations in your home um, that, it, that kind of expose that there's a window there, there's something there, it's not just a fly through area. So if you're getting birds hitting your windows, that's why you're attracting them to your yard. So put something that will say, hey, this is a window here, you can't just fly through this. It really does help and it saves some birds. Um, and so that's pretty much, I think about it, I mean, clean, clean, clean is, is a super, super important thing uh, that I think you should do uh, when birding is make sure to clean your stuff up. It really does help um, and it encourages more birds to come back. They like a clean environment. Um, and so they like to feed from a clean feeder, they like clean seed and they like a clean birdhouse. So make sure to clean those out at the proper times throughout the year. Um, and then just enjoy it and have fun. 
Uh, I am always trying different seed. Of course, I sell lots of different types of seed, so I'm always trying different things. Um, and what I really believe is, is that if you get a good quality seed, it's gonna stay in your feeder longer um, and it, it's gonna fill up the birds faster. Uh, another little thing that I, that I kind of always talk about is the different types of beaks that birds have. So like chickadees and wrens have the pointed beak. Uh, you're gonna typically see those birds fly in. So if you see birds that are flying in, flying off real quick, that's because they can't crack the seed right there. They gotta take it somewhere where they feel protected. So they're swooping in, they're searching through the seed, trying to find which one they really like. Then they take it off. And I usually try and follow them because they'll go to a local, a nearby branch, a small tree, a little bush, um, and they'll sit there and they crack the seed open and they eat it out and then they come back. So it creates a lot of activity. It's a lot of fun to watch. Woodpeckers are another one of those. Uh, however, cardinals and blue jays, the ones that have the triangular shaped beak, um, they are going to sit there and they can sit there on the feeder for a while and just sit there and they can crack it with their beak, they can pick out the, the seed, they can drop the shell, and then um, they can continue to eat. And so it's a lot of fun to watch those as well. So, um, so that's, a, that's kind of a, that's the reason that you might see some birds swooping in, swooping back out, and then while some birds might just sit there and eat because they have the ability to sit there and crack a seed open um, and just continue to sit there and eat. However, that's why I also like having the seeds that are already cracked. So that's why something like the songbird fruit is a great one because it's got some of the seeds that they could take off and crack, but it's also got the meats in there as well. So they'll sit there and pick through it and you'll attract lots and lots of birds with it. So I hope that helped. I hope uh, you get you got something out of, of some of my birding tips and tricks. Um, and so definitely try it if you've never done it before. It's really, really easy. It's a lot of fun. Um, I know I got my mom into it last Christmas, got her one of the squirrel busters, and she absolutely loves it. And now she's buying seed all the time uh, and she loves to fill it up. Um, I know that there's a lot of different issues out there that you might have. I had a raccoon uh, that likes to come and mess with mine. So I had to slightly position it different because he could hang off the tree, grab the feeder over. So of course, this is the one I use and I was wondering where it was going. I mean, it was always full, um, and then the birds were you know, enjoying it, and then one night it was just emptied. And I was like, well, I know a lot of birds don't eat at night, so what happened? So the next night I saw the raccoon was grabbing it, pulling it over, and dumping out the seed, and then going and eating it all. So uh, you know, watch that, and then you can always just transition. You can just change it. It's very easy to do. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's very enjoyable. It's very easy to do to get started in it. Just pick up some things and you'll start adding to your collection before you know it. I think I've got like seven or eight different feeders that I kind of transition and try in different areas. The more feeders, the better. The more houses, the better. The more you're doing, the more activity you're going to get. And then it just becomes more and more enjoyable. Um, and then, of course, think about the areas in your home that you're spending a lot of time. We spend a lot of time at our kitchen sink or our dining room tables or our kitchen tables. Um, so look at those windows, see if there's an area that you can get a bird feeder or a bird house um, that you can see so you can get to watch it uh, very easily and enjoy that. So I hope that all helped. I hope you all have a great Merry Christmas um, um, and then of course a Happy New Year. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your 2020. I hope it's safe. I hope uh, everybody has a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. Christmas is coming very soon. Enjoy it. The new year will be here very soon. Uh, so 2021, we'll be back. Uh, doing seminars and we'll be uh, going forward into the 2021 season. I couldn't be more excited about spring. It's right around the corner. It's going to be here before you know it. So I hope you all have a great day. I'm going to come over and check and see if there's any questions. If not, if you're taking off, have a great one and we'll see you in the new year. All right, let's see if I can get in here. Okay, so we got, let's see. So Sue said, I miss being able to feed the birds. Great hobby watching the beautiful birds. I agree, Sue. I didn't give myself enough space to get in here. Let's see if I can get a little bit focused. All right, so Deborah's from Virginia Beach. Sue from Chesapeake, hello. Um, Deanna from Harrisonburg, nice. That's, I went to uh, college at JMU. Uh, my birds are eating well, that's great to hear. Tess from Virginia, hello. Eleanor from Virginia Beach, Fran saying hello to everybody. All right, so Jill said, new to Maryland last winter, do birds bring ticks into the yard? Uh, didn't have ticks when feeding in Ohio, but definitely had lots here. No deer or squirrels in our small fenced yard, just birds. Um, so Jill, let me get, I'm gonna move this slightly. 
see if I can get in here a little bit easier. All right, there we go. All right, so Jill, I, I, birds, I, they might get ticks, um, but typically you're not going to um, have a ton of ticks due to the, the birds. Uh, they do naturally um, uh, live in this area. There's lots of other animals that are smaller like um, mice and different things that can spread ticks around. So whether you have deers or, or, or no deer or no squirrels, uh, you can still get lots of ticks. And it depends. It also is Maryland, um, you know, has colder winters than us. So you typically shouldn't see as much tick action now. But if you do, they like to live in wooded piles. They travel on other small animals like mice and stuff like that. Um, so I, I don't think it's because you have birds that you, that you might have ticks. There are solutions out there for ticks. So you might look at going to a local garden center and talking to them about your tick problem uh, because they can probably get you a solution for it. Something that's not going to hurt the birds or the other wildlife, something that'll uh, just kind of take care of that insect issue. I know that we carry a couple granular products that you can spread to help with ticks in the yard. So Lori said, I see a lot of heron in my back, um, in my back uh, off my deck. Loving the sound. Love it. That's awesome. Osprey. All right. Uh, so Eleanor, sorry, do you recommend any suets, stew-bought, store-bought, or homemade? Uh, so there's lots and lots of different types of suet out there. Um, you can make your own homemade. That is definitely fine. Um, I don't know of a recipe off the top of my head, but that definitely is an option. Um, uh, but... Any kind of the, any of the store-bought ones, I think are pretty good quality. Uh, I like the no melt ones, so that way I can use it year uh, year round. If I so if I happen to buy like four of them um, and it's a no melt, then that means it won't melt off in the summer, so I can still use it in the summer months. Most people use suet in the winter months, but you can use them year round. Um, so uh, I carry again, I carry Coles and I carry Wild Delight, even in the suets. Um, so a little bit higher quality, I think is going to last a little bit longer and do a little bit better is always my recommend recommendation with any type of food that I sell. So Jody said the squirrel buster is awesome. Can also set it so the crows can't get in it. That's true, Jody. Uh, it's a great, great feeder. I think if anybody ever tries it, it's awesome. Eleanor said squirrels will get on top of the hopper feeders and lean down and eat the seed. And that is true. So I didn't bring up um, uh, what are they? The baffles. So I, I, I didn't bring any baffles to show you, but baffles are a good option if you can put it on a feeder because baffles are really, really hard for the squirrels to get around. But yes, a hopper feeder squirrels can get into. Um, typically this one, the squirrel proof hopper feeder that I was talking about that has this little thing that closes, that's a little bit harder for squirrels to get into. Yes, they can cling on the roof um, and they could hang over, but it's a harder kind of reach around for them and they're typically going to try and get here and then that closes it off. So hopefully that helps. Um, so Jody also said, so do I and so do my indoor cats. They have a large where they can watch all day long. So they love to watch the birds. That's awesome. So more ticks in Maryland and Virginia due to milder winter temps. Lawn applications for ticks and fleas help. Possums love eating ticks. Good to know. I did not know possums like that. Uh, so that's interesting. So again, I always learn something new every day. That's funny. Um, but yes, for sure, milder winters mean more ticks make it through the winter season. They can uh, duplicate and they can they can uh, reproduce much quicker. Um, but typically, you're going to find them in wood piles or in lawns and types of areas. Really sheltered areas are, are typically where you're going to see the majority of the problems. Um, and so you know, using some sort of treatment to to try and really eliminate them will help. Um, Eleanor says, I know bluebirds are in our area. I've seen them, uh, but I've never seen any in my yard. What can I do to entice them? So Eleanor, bluebirds really love um, a mealworm or an insect. Um, so if you're looking to really attract them, oh, I dropped it down. Uh, but looking at a, um, uh, a meal, a mealworm or the bugs and berries is a good option. That's going to entice a lot of bluebirds in your yard. So look at the types of feeders um, that, or looks at, look at the type of seed and make sure you're getting the seed that's maybe exclusively or more designed for a bluebird. I think that will help. Um, I don't typically see too, too many in my yard, but I will get them from time to time. Um, and so that, that might help. Oh, catio. So Jerry said catio enclosed cat patio. That's funny. 
Uh, all right, so I think that's everybody's questions. I hope everybody has a great day. Um, enjoy uh, your holiday season, the rest of your holiday season. Enjoy the new year, and I hope to see you next year. I hope everybody is doing well, and we'll see you in 2021. Have a great day, everybody.